Residents in Connor Christ in prison ministry, one of the great hidden treasures. It has been in existence since 1985, and I can't tell you how tremendously impressed and inspired I have been by the nature of this ministry. The volunteers bring great enthusiasm and dedication, and they bring great hope and joy to the inmates whom they serve. Unfortunately, too often today those who are incarcerated are modern day lepers, and we need to reach out to them that we appreciate that they are human beings like ourselves who have a dignity and worth which are invaluable. And I knew at that point I needed God in my life and constantly stayed into the Bible. Um, at this time now I'm just not reading it, I'm studying it. And um, at some point it started studying me. I'm scared of torture and I'm scared of a nursing home, but prison doesn't bother me. I, I saw my children, I saw my son, I saw myself as a young man, and I didn't feel uncomfortable, threatened, uh, or in danger in any way, shape, or form. I, I, I felt completely at ease. And at first, I, I was nervous the night before, I didn't sleep, and then I, like the day of it, I'm like, am I sure I wanna do this? And then I did it, and it was just great. Tell them that it's not scary, um, that the men are very respectful. I know, at one of these hoots, my friend Marie was in deep conversation with one of the inmates beside her, a big burly guy, and I said to her, what were you talking about? And she said, we were exchanging recipes. So, <laughs> the, hoot, the hoot is really fun. Everybody that does it really enjoys it a lot. We went into the room, uh, a large room like a gym, that we were going to use for the weekend. And the inmates had spent uh, quite a bit of time preparing that room, and they'd uh, they brought in all these plants, and large plants and flowers, white linens on the tables, and it was clear that this was something that meant a lot to the inmates that were taking part, that they had a lot of respect for the people that were coming in from the outside. Uh, some of the inmates actually present talks as well, which is always very moving. What will these guys be like? There was a long pause, and somebody said, they're shy. There was another long pause, and then every person at the table, myself included, said, that's true. I guess I was surprised at um, how normal that they were, and, and when I say normal, I mean, um, this wasn't like you were looking at people who were so much different than, than others. It saw them, you know, get up and at the end in particular and, you know, make presentations or poetry. I was, you know, blown away by the you know, the ability to, uh, to be that creative. An inmate came up to me and he said he just doesn't understand how anybody would want to give up a weekend to, to be inside of a prison. The last rec that I participated in, I met one of the inmates that was helping out with the food service. He's a hospice volunteer in the prison. So the night before our rec weekend was to start, he got called to sit with this man that was about to pass away. Um, and that was part of what he did as a volunteer, um, as an inmate. And, and I felt that as a, as a father and a grandfather, that I could sit and I could talk with these young men and maybe have something to offer. At a funeral mass for a young woman I taught in high school, and I've always called this my Macedonian moment, one of her pallbearers was in a correction officer's uniform, turned out to be her cousin, and in a driving rain afterwards came over to me and said, I've always felt it was Christ speaking. Father, no priest ever comes to the Rensselaer County Jail. I said, not even to say Mass. And he said, no. I went down the next day and I've been in it ever since. And you could tell that it made a, a difference to them, especially having us come in. And that was the reason that I went, was because uh, one of our group leaders said that um, it would be very important to have particularly men there because, you know, um, there were not maybe as many men who came from the outside who would be able to relate to them. I always feel the presence of God in Iraq. I grew up in a, a family that was probably as dysfunctional as any, but it, it was still a family and I could do something to uh, bring a little bit of that to people in prison who've often not had good families or a good upbringing that I had. It was
was overwhelming in, in a lot of ways. It was sad, but it was also very uplifting because you saw how people were um, remaking themselves. While I'm leaving, I just can't think of a better place I'd rather be for those three days. In prison, you have people come in, you have gangs come in, they pass the signs or whatever, but you had a person who was coming there to to see God or see the God in that person that was there, I would say they would say that they were wonderful. So those who are engaged in prison ministry do a wonderful job of bringing a personalized dimension to those who find themselves excluded from the rest of society. I hope that this ministry will continue to grow and flourish in the days ahead.